Hey, hey. Hello. Hello. I made breakout session meeting rooms this time. I hope they will. <laughs> I noticed the recording session uh, text was slightly different this time, but that could be because I just updated Zoom. Hey, what's what? The recording session text? Yeah, so on, um, on Zoom, under the old client, uh, you got to notice that the session was being recorded and that you could leave if you didn't want to. Now with the new client that was released, there is even more text that talks about like localized recording is available for any participants with permissions. Um, you have the option to leave if you would like. Huh. I did not see that. Maybe I have to update my glance. <laughs> That's cool though. Hey, Alex. Index in the chat. Good morning, Um, Aratna, can you post the like the Google Doc or the the content, the link to the content that uh, you worked on for the um, what's that for the breakout last time? I'm sorry. Can you Did link you... The, the document to the content for um, what you worked on for the breakout the last time? Yeah, I've um, added stuff, right? Oh, you added it directly to the document or? Yeah, directly into the, oh, this is meeting notes. Yikes, okay, my, my bad. <laughs> Put it in the meeting notes. Uh, I'll move it to the main doc, sorry. Well, there isn't a main doc, but the, the idea was that we will bring something. It's, it's fine, we'll just leave it there. Uh, yeah, I added some things to the verification as well as runtime. Um, I'm, I'm still working on it, just started this morning. Um, distribution artifacts. So this one, uh, is Michael on it? Yes. Hey, Michael. If you can, if you can just hey. put the, the document that you you were working oh, on the, the yep. group in the chat. I'll I'll add it to the Google Doc. Sure. One second. Okay. So today, um, so I'm gonna quickly go through uh, what the plan is today and also the plan is going forward for the next couple of weeks. Um, so what's gonna to happen today is we have Ava that will, will be spending some time to go through the um, SSC landscape doc that she's created. 
Um, so the second half, we will be going into the breakout sessions again, um, continuing what we, we started with last week. Um, the, the plan for this really is that we think that we um, are in a really good spot with all the ideas and all the content that you know, we've, we've started brainstorming over the past couple of weeks. Um, so the idea is that we are going to be closing the, um, so we have, we have the overall outline, we have the overall goals, we have a lot of content about people putting in about what they think the concerns are, what they think like are the main important uh, action stories. So what we're going to do is we are going to just get a couple of folks uh, next week. We're just going to run through all the information we have and kind of like uh, distill it into a good outline that we can start working with. Um, so that's the plan. The, if you want, if you have any ideas that um, you think that are important for the reference architecture, uh, be sure to get all those things in. Um, by the by next week, by the meeting next week. So just to keep that in mind. Um, so we will start with um, the SSC landscape. Ava, do you wanna grab the mic? Sure, thank you. Um, shall I share my screen or does folks have a link they can open it as well? I think it'd be helpful if you, you can share the screen. Okay. Oops. Okay, so the intent behind this before I start scrolling through it was uh, as I've jumped into working on uh, software supply chain and open source. I noticed there's a lot of work happening in a lot of different places, different foundations, different uh, teams, even in those same foundations. And no one had yet that I'd found um, been able to tell me sort of cohesively either where all the work was happening or which, which work was appropriately differentiated versus which work was duplicative and might be able to work together on stuff. Um, and so my intent is to create a map of the overall domain, not just in cloud native. So to be clear, the scope of this is all of software supply chain and open source, not just cloud native, not just IoT, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, as I have dug into this, I found some uh, externalities that are not technical, but that are affecting the way some groups are working together. I pulled that out into a separate document. It may or may not be interesting to folks. I don't think it's relevant to the work here. Um, and then this is sort of the, the list in its current state. I'm looking for feedback at this point on uh, which foundations, which um, spaces work is happening in. So there's various metadata formats. There's work happening in the OCI. Uh, that should probably be, say, Notary v2, which is linked later down. Um, the OpenSSF, obviously, some work in the CD Foundation. The IETF has at least one, and I think they are preparing to create a second different working group related to some of the space. Obviously, all of you, all of this group in the CNCF. There's some work in the CCC. There's some work in the Open Infra Foundation, a bunch of stuff in the kernel, all the reproducible builds work. Um, there's been a little bit of work. This is what I was just learning about this week to have compilers actually generate the SBOM and output that as a build artifact. Um, my opinion at this point is that's um, probably one of the more interesting efforts just to, to be able to cut across all of open source to do it at the language runtime level. Yep, NTIA, thank you. Um, I think I have a, a mention of them further down, but that's a great, that's where they should be mentioned in this doc. And then I started collecting specific projects where there's technical work happening, there's actual code, someone might be able to use it uh, in, in this list. Uh, I'm not gonna walk through each of these, but please continue to add stuff uh, to this list if there are projects that you're aware of that are not yet listed. Um, again, my goal is to just at the highest level have a full list of all the technical work related to open source software supply chain. So this 
document can be a, a jumping off point to all of, to, to everywhere that stuff is happening. And then my larger sort of end goal of this is to begin to create um, lexical mappings of the kind of work that's happening. Um, and, you know, the reference architecture you all have built is a great view on that. Um, I've also built one based on uh, signing. And so I'll pull that up uh, to share it. Just a moment to get that tab over here. Can you all now see a, a pretty picture? Yep. Cool. Yes. So this particular view uh, on signing includes some projects like Intoto, uh, uh, Notary, SigStore. The, this framework says we should probably have um, tools and processes that do builds. We need like Intoto to make a claim that a build was made following some policy. Um, something might actually generate those policies to be applied at runtime or at container launch time. Each of those tools create an artifact. That artifact is related to some sort of an object, a container, a binary. Those artifacts need to adhere to uh, some standard format. There's already three um, that it might. Who knows if there'll be more. Um, and those artifacts uh, should probably be stored somewhere that they can be retrieved. And there's a lot of discussion that I've seen around whether, whether we use SIG store or they're stored in a container registry with the Notary v2 work, or if they're stored locally in the same file system and just distributed as a, you know, a second file or a second artifact with the same distribution mechanism. Uh, there is some work and it's called, um, uh, I'm forgetting what the acronym SKIM stands for, um, supply chain integrity, something, but it's like uh, another, you know, shared Merkle tree or blockchain for storing metadata on. And all of these rely on identity systems. And that is an area where I, I also see a lot changing. It's not just PGP keys, but work in the CCC on attestation is starting to bring in the uh, hardware identity as another layer of um, identity, not just the developer who signed it, but the machine on which it was built. Was it a secure enclave or was it a, uh, you know, up to the right patch level of firmware? Can you attest to that? That it was built on a secure server. So not complete, but this is one view onto that space. And what I'm hoping to do over the next couple of weeks is continue to build other perspectives um, to, to help folks understand not just the process uh, as in your, uh, in the, uh, the steps in the supply chain, but other views on the same domain. So that's where I'm at so far. I'd love to discuss this or get any feedback folks have. Uh, I think this is uh, this is great work. Um, I, I think uh, many of us in uh, the group have run into similar sorts of issues where there's a lot of folks working on a lot of different things, um, some related, some unrelated. Uh, there's a lot of overlap with that work. Um, there's areas where we should be collaborating. There's areas where it probably makes sense where we don't collaborate yet. Um, I, I think one of the things that that also in that last diagram that you showed that I think uh, at least myself um, would be interested in, in seeing what other groups are sort of discussing um, specifically around vocabulary, right? There's a lot of terms being thrown around like attestation versus claim versus you know, artifact versus, you know, content or whatever else. Um, and it would be useful to, to, I think, on that level, um, at least in the community, start to, yeah, text, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think uh, it would be useful to, to help um, figure out what, what makes sense in the, in, you know, certain areas, especially with some of the confusion. Um, I think one of the biggest ones is around attestation. It kind of has a very strong connotation and a lot of folks are, believing that certain things that are attesting are already secure and maybe those things aren't. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think 
definitely interested in, in understanding um, what other groups might be talking about this and how we can kind of come together, at least on the vocabulary and, and uh, taxonomy, I should say, um, okay. to start off with. Yeah, I can. Um, I know attestation has a very specific definition in the IETF RATS remote attestation and forget the other two, some, a T specification. Um, but so I have been working a lot with the IETF RATS folks in the Confidential Computing Consortium. So uh, I can pretty easily pull over that definition. I think that's a, a, a reasonable um, nexus of people to say they're authoritative on that uh, and just borrow their definition. Um, but yeah, I think that I've also seen a lot of, of discussion around what is a claim versus a policy versus um, and a, a sort of uh, some folks loosely saying an attested document, but they really mean it's sort of notarized, it's signed and asserted that uh, it's non-reputably mine or whatever. So yeah, okay, I'll start on, on a taxonomy. Any other thoughts? So Eva, could you explain um, what you were saying about the TPMs and what artifacts will be validated relevant to that? H hardware um, trusted modules, right? So there are three different types of um, secure modules in servers. You have a TPM, an HSM, and a TEE. Okay. Um, I know the Keyline project is working on using a, a TPM and surfacing that up through the host operating system the hypervisor to the container to be able to assert that or um, claim that the container image has not been modified or tampered with in some way by the host or by um, some system admin. Gotcha. That's okay. one work stream that Keylime is working on. There's a, another approach to solve the same problem, which is building um, an assurance that as a cloud tenant, your cloud provider has not either been compromised or intentionally tampered with anything. And so the trusted execution enclave or TEE, uh, that is still kind of in its early stage as a technology. Um, but there's effort, there's a lot of effort in the confidential computing consortium to build technology to enable TEEs, um, whether that's through Intel SGX or through AMD SEV or IBM's PEF. Um, right, each of the chip manufacturers are making uh, new technology that can enable this, uh, what we call the um, mode three isolation. So a VM that is isolated from the host operating system, from root, from the cloud, we're getting there. Uh, and so pulling it back to the document I was showing, there are folks who are interested in um, at the time a container is run, being able to verify that it was built or the applications in that container were compiled inside an isolated or trust execution environment. I don't think anyone has that today, but I see folks working on that. The same could be, uh, the same approach could be used to verify that it was built on a system with a known uh, patch level or a known good state. So using a TPM to verify the firmware the host operating system, the kernel, all of those are, are known state and uncompromised. The TPM could expose that information to the build system, Jenkins or, or whatever. Embed that in the signature, possibly through Notary v2. That gets transported with the, the container image. And then at runtime, verified back against a list of known good uh, firmwares. Folks are interested in that. I've seen a couple of design docs about it, but I don't think it exists yet. Did Thank you. Thank you, Eva. Welcome. Cool. Any other thoughts, questions? 
Ava, do you have a timeline that you're looking to solicit comments and um, additional content to this document? Um, I don't have a sort of an end date in mind since I'm not planning on publishing this somewhere yet. Uh, I imagine it would be more of a living document um, with sort of a, a, an asymptotic approach until we all feel like, yeah, there's we've, we've caught everything. Um, next month or so. So the work you are doing about all the security controls and um, how everything is tying to identity, that can evolve into a reference architecture of its own, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I think what we are doing here is, you know, we'll, we'll be using um, some of what Ava has as well as referencing a document. You know, this is in the development of the reference architecture. Yeah. And do you all have a target date for the reference architecture you're building? So that we've split it into two parts. Um, the first is to outline what would be in the reference architecture. And then the second part would be the development of it. Um, we are hoping to, our target right now is to have a, um, an outline that will be good enough to start with um, by KubeCon North America, so by October. Um, the idea is that we want to have this document ready so that we can socialize it, we can go to folks in different projects to get them excited. Um, you know, we've tried to engage some of these folks early on, but because there isn't much of a scope, that <laughs> it's a bit difficult. And also, I think that there were also some companies that were doing these things uh, within their own um, their own organizations, but they didn't really have an incentive to participate. So we're hoping that this document will you know, bring folks together as well. Sounds good. And yeah, I think that's a, a good approach and a good timeline. Um, once this document feels to me like it is, uh, I'm getting diminishing feedback, I'm probably gonna shift to a little bit of a more narrow technical focus. My hope from this is to um, find areas where there is duplication or where there could be, um, folks could rally around a single, whether it's a single standard or a single tool. Um, I do believe attestation and identity is a really key part of this, like a, a hub, if you will. Um, I also think the, um, the compiler integration is another hub, and I'm, I'm currently pulling on that thread. Uh, I think that's somewhere that we have a bit of lacking of representation on, for partless stuff, um, unless someone corrects me. But I think it would be helpful as well to maybe um, if we could get someone from that community to kind of make that introduction. Sorry, from which community? Uh, from someone in the compilers community that's working on these type of things. Or at least like get, point us to a few presentations. It yeah. seems like you've done you've done quite a bit of work uh, researching in that area, so I think yeah. it'd be helpful to educate us on this as well. I've already met with uh, .NET compiler leads and the Rust community. I've got feelers out to Go and uh, dot, uh, sorry, Go and Python. But if any of you are connected to the Go community or Go compiler community, I'd love that. Um, that's a, a I don't have strong connections there yet. Um, Ava, qu quick question to make sure I'm I'm getting this right. Um, so I've never thought about doing that at a compile level. I, it's, I'm quite surprised. I mean, I, I find it really cool. I just never thought about it. I, I just want to make sure. Um, what sounds difficult to me is that you basically need everybody to sort of agree on an SBOM format, which I don't think we have yet even. So, I mean, it's it probably makes a lot of sense to lay the groundwork to build the idea so that they'll start mm -hmm. thinking, oh, this could be a good thing to have in a compiler. But it does seem like a hard step, I suppose, to get everybody to agree on all these different projects on one common thing. I'm, I may be wrong, but this is- Oh, no, you're, you're absolutely mind. right. So um, one of the problems that I've heard is that we're not, we're not going to get everybody to just pick one across the community because there's different values and benefits 
um, and there could potentially be changes to any of those formats um, forthcoming in the future as new standards come out and we refine actually what we care about within an SBOM. We're, there is a known problem space of being able to translate SPDX to CycleNDX and back and forth to SWID because certain like we're asking consumer consuming entities of the SBOM to be able to take whatever format that's being presented to them and be able to use it and that's not a light ask for them so having the capability to transition back and forth between them is what's going to be critical and i have not yet found anything that will do that ah so um, michael go ahead. oh sorry uh, yeah, I was. Uh, you probably have a better idea than I do, but um, I'd actually been working on some of that tooling um, on on the side. Uh, it, right now, just learning a lot about the different formats. I think the the biggest issue um, I've run into is mostly just with around um, the different formats. All seem to have higher priority around different pieces of the metadata. Like you know, CycloDX is very focused on the security in that piece. SPDX is still very much focused on the license in that piece. And um, they are currently, from what I understand, like I have written up a, some POC stuff that does translate it. It's just the problem seems to be, um, even though there are mandatory and optional fields, um, some of the, you know, SPDX really says, yeah, the, the, the license is optional, but we really, really prefer you had it. And CycloDX says the same thing, except about the security stuff, CVEs and that kind of thing. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> so there are tools out there that already do that conversion, Michael. Um, I, will, I will go grab that list. I, I saw it last week and forgot to copy it into here. Um, I don't know yeah, that's if, it's, if it's complete in its coverage, but there are at least some. So does that do, that's just upload the file contents and it will, it will transfer them over. It's not necessarily the production into all of the formats, correct? Correct. It, it is, uh, what I saw at least was a command line tool or a, a library um, that lets you transform, um, I think it was SPDX into SWID. And don't quote okay. me on that. I don't have the reference in front of me, but. Um, it was so, like, yeah. It's still a very young space and probably lots of room for improvement. Yep, yep. Uh, as far as compiler integration, um, .NET already has the ability, at least in the last couple of years, to include, um, uh, when you compile something, it can, it can include in the output, either in the PDB debug file or in a header in the binary, the file path and file hash of all your input files, whether they're source files or object files. So there's precedent for that. Um, of course, it's a .NET specific format. I'd like to see that in a consistent format across all languages. I know I'm dreaming big here, but um, that's what I do. Well, also, actually, one thing I, I did remember, and, and um, Bernard is on the call, and he uh, he can keep me uh, honest here. I believe also the Cyclone DX CLI tools, like coming straight from Cyclone, I believe do allow you to transfer between the formats, but I don't know also at what level. Yeah, it can transfer, but you know the the challenge is that as you mentioned, Michael, it's a subset of data, right? Like so, you will you don't you can't have a you will lose some data when you translate. You know, it's, it's all specific to what format you want, what type of data you want to keep. And there is a option to transfer from Cyclone DX to SPDX and things like that. Yeah. Okay, so we are we're kind of closing in on the first half of the call. Um, and I think we, there's very good discussions um, around like compilers and SBOM interchangeability. Um, so I, I like to, I've written that down the notes. I'm gonna put these topics as future topics that we can pull up on. Um, but for now, um, we have some work to do. <laughs> so uh, thanks so much, Ava, for the run through. I think this was really helpful and it was a very good discussion that came out of it. Um, so yeah, if you, I will copy the doc, Ava's document into the meeting notes as well. I think it's already there. So if you have anything to comment on, please, please, uh, you can get the link there. Um, 
All right, so coming back to um, discussion. So um, as I briefly mentioned earlier, uh, we are going to go into different breakout groups again. Uh, the idea is that uh, this will be kind of our last round of high-level reference architecture brainstorming. Um, so what's going to happen is we'll do the same thing as last week. We'll go into breakout groups. Uh, everyone will kind of start brainstorming about you know what are important, what are the different components. Uh, and then what's going to happen is um, uh, a few of us and will get together. So we will we are looking for folks that are willing. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of like distilling all the information that we've brainstormed together and putting it into kind of like an actionable outline. Uh, at least act actionable reference architecture components. So we uh we will be looking for folks that will be willing to put in you know a couple hours of work into helping us you know distill all this information and write it down. Um, we will reach out to some some folks as well. Uh, but if you if you think that this is something that you're really excited about, um, please you know reach out to us and then we will, we can also include you in the discussions there. Um, so we have three breakout rooms. Um, I think that's kind of appropriate for the number of people that we have. Um, so before we go ahead and go into the different groups, any questions about, you know, the, the, the current plans with the, with the reference architecture? So um, do you want to just uh, also talk a little bit about like um, the, the work that you, that we expect, uh, sorry, to, to, to take a step back that the, what is the, you know, the output here should be, you know, at first, something like a diagram sort of describing what the individual components are that make up this software factory. And then, you know, next steps would then be something like uh, like an actual implementation or, you know, a, a reference POC implementation of, of what that looks like. That's that right. right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the, the, the first part uh, without the POC is, you know, what we, uh, what we hope to get ready by KubeCon and you know, the, ref the POC will move along with it. Um, obviously, we're, I don't think we're expecting that to be done by KubeCon, <laughs> but uh, I think where we see where we see gaps, we would have to go back to the reference architecture uh, document again to start like modifying it and adding information of why we're using certain things and not other things. Uh, but yeah, so I think Michael, thanks for thanks for giving the rundown. So one clarification, um, to me, reference architecture is a generic set of capabilities that you need, right? And then if we are actually mapping tools to that reference architecture, that can be a separate diagram. Yeah, is that so, what we were thinking? Yeah, so so there will be kind of like, here's, here's what you need to do, what, what the reference architecture can do. And then for each of like the different components, components. of it, that will be kind of like here are some of the toolings that you can do. Um, the POC will use this particular tool out of this set of tools and for these reasons. Um, Michael, does, does that corroborate with what you were saying? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So like as an example, we might have something like CI CD pipeline is the architecture is in the architecture, but we might say, you know, just as an example, Tecton is the thing that we're looking at for like a reference implementation or a POC implementation. Thank you. Thanks. Cool. So we have three breakout rooms ready. Um, do we want to continue with um, the provenance for build artifacts, Michael, with that one? Sure. Yeah, um, I wrote about a bunch more stuff. OK. So I'm going to put the first. You want to take the first room? Hopefully it works. Sure. Uh, uh, breakout room one. Yes, I will. Yeah, we'll go do that. I'm gonna put the providence of for dependencies or so on to that, just because I feel like it's gonna overlap a little bit. Um, we have 
verification of inputs and outputs and consumption by artifacts on runtime. Oh, we, we also have storage and distribution. Um, is Andreas here? I don't think he is, right? Um, who was in that group last time? Got me. All right. I don't know if anybody else is here. We were, a lot of me uh, and Marina, and I don't see Marina either. Yeah, Marina couldn't make it. Um, so I'm going to set storage and distribution as the second breakup group. Um, Brenda, can, can you help kind of like lead the discussion there? I can lead it. Do we have people that are joining that? We will see. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then the last one, I think that's just a lump the verification inputs and outputs consumption of artifacts for runtime. That was uh, just me alone, so I can yeah. create my own room. <laughs> well, I already have the room there, so just okay. you can use that one. Hopefully it works. Um, I think we, yeah. I will go to the, um, I will, I will just jump between rooms and then I will, I will stay in the one where um, I think we are lacking people. Cool. Uh, so where are you sharing this room details? It's in the meeting notes. So uh, do you see it in the chat? I, I okay. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So breakout one, provenance, breakout two, storage, and breakout three, verification inputs, outputs, and consumption artifacts in the runtime. Thanks, Brandon. All right, uh, see you there. All right, see you. Arana, you got the you got the meeting next. I, I did. Okay, I'm I'll, gonna start uh, start the other Zoom. I'll have to drop from here. I can't. Yeah, yeah. I I just yeah. want to make sure everyone got the links. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye.